Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is for you, I'm Cyclone. It's time for our Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. We're going to start today the second of the 10 scenarios in the uh, Centenary Pack for the Flying Scotsman, Class A3, as you see it referred to here. Now, I did do some uh, checking about last time uh, between videos here. I did notice that these three scenarios are all the same journey. So you can see this journey goes as far as Peterborough. You can see six, seven, and eight are the same thing. They're a journey from Peterborough heading back and back to the Hornsey Depot. So basically, number eight is the reverse of number one here. That's basically what this is. You can see that the Peterborough leg, in both cases, is a level three scenario. So this is considered the harder part of the scenario, probably going from slow to fast, fast to slow. And therefore, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and then, of course, everything else is two star because they're all not hard at all. These two scenarios at the bottom are full journeys. And these two in the middle here, they are the opposites of each other going to and from the Neen Valley Railway. So there is a series of um, three sets of scenarios and two individual full length runs, it looks like, uh, that are their own independent sections. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and finish this uh, set by doing this scenario today and the next scenario on Tuesday. So this will probably be Tuesdays here. And I'll complete the whole set. I may uh, do something else again on the weekend, uh, but at some point I'm gonna come back and do these two next, uh, probably very soon where I have a gap, by the way, to put these two in as a back and forth trip. And we're going to uh, see those in the future as well very, very soon. Then we'll do the uh, next three at one time, and then we'll come back and do the individual runs at some point when we want to do a steam run. So I think we're going to try to go through these because they are nice little sets of scenarios. And I like the whole idea of sets of scenarios. I'll try and do that with custom content as well, doing things in a series because it just makes sense to have things that connect um, to each other and therefore form a bit of a story between them. So I kind of like that. So today we're going to take the 1Z01 service that comes from the 5Z01 service that was formed from the arrival at uh, London King's Cross. We should be starting, I believe, on platform number eight. And uh, from there, we're going to be heading uh, up to Peterborough, starting with a trip to Stevenage on the first leg of this rail tour. 40 minute scenario. Let's get started. Good morning, driver. Today you'll be taking this special run of the Flying Scotsman from London King's Cross up the East Coast Main Line. Please allow the final passengers to board here at King's Cross ahead of our booked 705 departure. Remember our maximum permissible speed is 75 miles per hour. So that will apply on the fast line as well it looks like when we get to that part of the run. Let's go ahead and get started. We obviously arrived at six o'clock in the last scenario. We've been sitting here for an hour it seems like. Now we're gonna go ahead and get going at 705. Let's get started. And the doors are not open yet. So we're gonna open the doors now. You can see that is our first task. And our second task is simply stopping at Stevenage. So uh, there we go, that's easy enough to figure out. Actually, what's our arrival time? Let's check that. We have uh, five minutes to kill here. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the train for a moment. But uh, taking a quick look, our stop at Stevenage is at 7.37. So this should apparently not take too long, apparently, which is very nice. And I'm saying apparently way too much, apparently. So apparently I need to move on with the train. Let's go ahead and uh, just talk about the train because I didn't actually show you the train last time. Let's take a quick peek at it. I'll hide the HUD for a moment and uh, move to two. And you can see a train coming in. We'll uh, admire the train coming in. That's a class 801. You can see a lot of 801s uh, which now come with the route and uh, they are showing all over the place here. In fact, there's probably a one. No, that's a uh, 365 it looks like, 365. But a lot of 801s over there, they've basically taken over in this area. There's one leaving, by the way. And the train we're going to be driving, by the way, is, of course, the Flying Scotsman Centenary reskin. So we're going to take a closer look at it here. And this is what the Centenary looks like. Now, I have seen some commentary from uh, some people. They don't actually like the uh, skin. They say there's uh, some fundamental problems with it. But as someone who's not used to everything on the British Railways and doesn't know what to look for, I'm okay with it. Um, I don't see a huge problem with it. Not everything's going to be perfect, and I understand that. So again, nice uh, look at the driver. Whoops, at the driver. I guess that's me, the bald guy on the left. Must be the fireman on the right. You can see the Flying Scotsman logo here as well, the British Railways logo, ra logo rather. And of course, we're taking all the Mark I coaches with us today. So we're going to go ahead and fly over those, come into the platform. You see the doors are open. Now it's showing a red signal, which is correct. We know there's a red signal ahead. I didn't know we had a repeater on the platform at the very start here. That is very interesting. 
I uh, did not know there was a repeater at the start of the route. So the very first signal has a repeater. There you go. I think you just drive up to the signal you would know. Another train coming in. We should be probably be getting our green very soon when this 365 finishes arriving. Uh, but we have to wait till 6.05 to leave. And this is a back view of the train. So that's what we're driving today. And I'm going to go ahead and get one more look at the front of the train. Locomotive 60103. There you go. Let's hop in the cab and let's go ahead and get ourselves ready to go as we get our green signal. It is 7.02. We actually still have a couple minutes to wait. So, again, we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, get some eye candy shots while we wait. Looks like we're getting an information box to start out here. The game is frozen, so I guess we're going to read this. Information about the history of the Flying Scotsman. The Flying Scotsman was built in Doncaster, the first locomotive of the newly formed London and Northeastern Railway. And honestly, I wish I could just read this out of the manual instead of on my screen. Uh, it left the works on 24 February 1923, or as I refer to it in North America, February 24th of 1923, with number 1472. It was designed by Sir Nigel Greasley, Gressley Greasley, I don't know, as part of the A1 class, the most powerful locomotives used by the LNER at that time. And I think it is Greasley. I think I've heard that before pronounced like that. That is the entire box. I don't know why we have a scroll bar, but that's the entire box. So let's get ourselves going here now that we've read the informational packet. More information. Never mind, we're not allowed to get going yet. Uh, by 1924, when it was selected to appear at the British empire exhibition in london the loco had been renumbered 4472 it was also at this time given the name flying scotsman it was in reference to the named daily one uh, 10 o'clock london to edinburgh departure from king's cross which started in 1862 and that was a very very long journey at that time it has since been uh, decreased to a much shorter journey uh, with the way railways are today and we're now allowed to finally get ourselves moving. Well, that was a nice little history lesson. There we go. So we are on our way. Now, since I'm not in the cab uh, listening for the AWS, I'm going to have to keep an eye on my exclamation point for any yellow signals or signal speed warnings. AWS ramps for speed warnings. So I'll have to keep an eye out for any expected... Uh, alerts and hit the Q key accordingly at that time. I can already tell this is going to be a very, very busy scenario because we already saw about four or five trains heading in and out of London King's Cross. So the world is very much alive around us in this scenario. So we do have a green as we come up to the Gasworks Tunnel, line B. And as we get forced into the cab, I'm going to take a quick, well, we're not yet, but I'll take a quick look at the uh, starting location we were in anyway, because I believe the platform we came out of, uh, yeah, it was platform eight. So we did correctly start up platform eight as we got ourselves going here. So we're going to go ahead and follow the train on the map. In the meantime, we were not forced into the tunnel. We can actually, uh, you know, oh, it's because we're in the uh, external view. That's why we're looking out the window. So we should be able to look out the window. Regular two view does not work and force you into the cab. Same with three goes into a one view. So there you go. Out the window view, of course, does work. We are entering a 45 mile per hour section here. We have to remember we are limited to 75 miles per hour for our entire journey. 
which we might not even get to most of the time anyway. We'll find out. We are 27 miles away from Stevenage right now. And a little, little extra. If we were going a mile a minute, that would mean we would be going to arrive at 734. So this uh, could be uh, a case where we have, well, we have to wait for a 45 little area here anyway. So we're going to have to get up to 45 as quick as we can. But if we were able to get up to 60 immediately, we could arrive at 734. Going 60 the entire way. So we do want to get to that 75 section, make up some seconds here and minutes. I thought I lowered the reverser, but apparently it didn't take, so we'll do it again. You see that for each of the stops, the one at King's Cross and one at uh, Stevenage, we're getting 500 points for each one. So in easy math, 1,000 points right there available. We are on uphill right now, so the speed gain is very, very slow. Of course, at our current pace, if we stay at this pace for three minutes, we're covering the, uh, what, two minutes out of our space right there. We're looking at a 736 arrival if we take three minutes at 20. So we do need to get up out of this low speed limit as soon as we possibly can. I don't seem to see a good way to do that right now because it's going very, very slow getting up to speed. We really need to try and get this train up to 75. Or we're not going to be able to uh, make our schedule here. So there's our green signal again. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom in once again. And I'll change my view over to this camera for now because you have a better view over here. Now, part of the problem with uh, our speed coming out of the station is that we were on a massive uphill gradient. We are currently on even ground, so we are gaining some good speed now. We are definitely within uh, a much faster pace right now. It looks like the uh, train that left on the other platform is indeed carrying along because you saw the yellow signal there upgrade to a double yellow. So that is all good and normal. Somehow there's a red here behind a double yellow. We, of course, have our green. We are now also at a 55 mile per hour speed limit as we come up to our first station in about a less about a half a mile. Finsbury Park, there's a class 801 service. We have a double yellow, so I'm getting ready to... No, actually, that's no, the other line. Never mind. The other line is double yellow. So it went double yellow, red, double yellow. That is intriguing. So I'm going to lower my reverser a bit more now that we've hit 45 miles per hour. I'm going to try to get some uh, more speed here, try to maximize our speed. So Finsbury Park Platform 4 and 5 is what we're going through. Not that that detail matters, but it is. And this is Finsbury Park. So passing through Finsbury Park, we are now on our way to Herringay. Uh, you can see that I'm still having a little bit of lag on the uh, game, unfortunately. So it's not a perfect uh, quality yet. We are only one phase of the uh, upgrade process in. I'm sure the next phase will start looking at some of those noticeable lag spikes I'm having, even on medium quality. Uh, now, my computer is not the best computer for running the game. I will be the first to say that. I kind of do want to get a new computer to run some of this stuff at much faster speed because I'm sure it'll be a much more enjoyable uh, experience going at a much faster speed. Or a much better screen pace, I should say.
And here we are going through Herringue. There was some lag at the platform there. As we pass the end of the platform on our way to Alexandra Palace. We're now in a 60 mile per hour section. We're now 24 miles from our platform at Stevenage. At our current pace, we'd be arriving probably 736, 737, so we need to get above 60 as soon as possible. In fact, our ETA right now is showing us 736. This is another platform here. I forget the name of it offhand, and it's not immediately in front of me. Um, but there is another platform there. So we're getting close to our 60 limit. We are looking to get up onto the 75 limit, but we are on an uphill gradient, which might be part of the problem we're facing right now. The uphill gradient is making things harder for us. But apparently we are gaining time because I just gained a second on my ETA. This is Alexandra Palace. Now the line which I think heads towards the Hertford Loop line is uh, heading off to the left. It's going to eventually cross over us. And then it heads towards that line. We're going to go through our first uh, tunnel of the journey now. I'm going to see if I have my tunnel information on hand. I don't have this immediately in front of me, but I'll see if I can get this for you going forward. Coming up on the platform at New Southgate. That was the wood green tunnel that we went through, by the way. Strangely, I can only find one page of my information here, so I'm going to be a little bit limited on the uh, info I can provide right now. But uh, like I said, that last station was New Southgate. You can see that Oakley Park is coming up. We are over 60 miles per hour. So uh, right now, our situation is that we are going to be gaining time uh, no matter what we do now because we're looking at 20 miles to go, 735 arrival at 60. So we are completely gaining time at this point. And we're now losing some speed on the uphill gradient, so going to lessen our gain. The uh, tunnel we're going through is the Barnet Tunnel heading to Oakley Park. New Barnet, of course, is right after that. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near 75 miles per hour on today's journey.
change our view a little bit here as you can see. I wanted to give you more uh, lines to view in case any trains go by. Something tells me we're due for one. So we're coming by a new Barnet now. We're now over 63 miles per hour. I was right, there's an 801. The tunnel we're now approaching, I believe, is the head, uh, excuse me, the Hadley Wood South Tunnel. This will take us through Hadley Wood itself, which is the station you see on the HUD. We're then going to go through the Hadley Wood North Tunnel. So this is one of those uh, cases where a, a station is flanked by accompanying tunnels. The Hadley Wood South Tunnel is at mile point 10.26 of the line. Hadleywood is at 10.58 and the North Tunnel at 10.74. This is of course Hadleywood. That was the North Tunnel, and uh, between that and the Potter's Bar Tunnel, which is the next tunnel, there's not much to uh, look at here. We'll change the view so you can see the tunnel coming up here. And we'll change the view again to take a look at the Class 365 that's going by, right there, as we go into the, ha the Potter's Bar Tunnel, which is gonna take us to Potter's Bar after crossing Mutton Lane, where Mutton Lane will cross us. We're at 66.2 miles per hour. We're actually gaining on uphill, which I find interesting. I'm not used to that. I'm sure it's an auto fireman related thing. Maybe the fireman is doing something differently now that we're at a higher speed and we're therefore gaining. That may be related. I thought I saw a train ahead on this line for a second on the next line. That's actually a speed limit sign. Looks like the junction limit was 30 there. We didn't have to worry about that because we're not on the junction. That or maybe the middle station you have to go platform, the middle line you might have to go 30. That doesn't make sense, probably a junction. Probably for the junction. We have to get down to 55 up ahead, so we'll keep this in mind. That was, of course, Powders Bar Station. I think we're going to see Hawk's Head Line at some point around the point that the... Um, well, actually, a little bit before the speed limit, we're going to see Hawk's Head Line crossing. So we're going to have to drop to the 55, then we're going to come back up to 75. You notice I'm laying the speed drop on its own rather than hit the brakes. I'm going to bring up the F4 head for a moment so you can see the brake panel as I apply the brakes in a moment. We might get down to 55 without applying brakes, though. In the event that we do need them, you'll see that we can set a running brake. They'll go to a self-lap status and then we can actually apply it. And then you see if you move back to running or self-lap, it stays applied. You can then go to release to release that brake. So I'm going to go ahead and put a small amount of brake on because I am going to need it. So let's get the speed down in a hurry, please.
I got down in time, so we've released the brakes fully. We are in at 55 miles per hour just in time. I don't intend to ideally make it that close, but so be it. Uh, Brookman's Park is what the 55 limit is for. You have to be at 55 going through Brookman's Park. We're then going to move back to the 75 speed limit, which means I'm going to put the regulator back up. And off we go. And we're now under that 75. So we're going to go back to the minimal HUD for a little while. Of course, the reason I'm using the minimal HUD is because we do have the auto fireman on, so I don't actually need to monitor those stats. It'll just be all automated. You'll have a similar result on your train if you play this scenario. So the pace we're at right now, we should still be on time. This is uh, looking like a smooth run so far. As we come up to Wellham Green, and unfortunately I can't find the rest of my information right now, so uh, hopefully the rest of them are marked here. <laughs> this is where I'm going to bring up the files section on my phone and uh, get the station list up. Because I have it on my uh, iCloud. see another station coming up in the distance here. You can also see a 365 coming in the slow lane. So the, sta the station is Hatfield. I was actually looking up another route recently that actually goes through Hatfield or might start at Hatfield. I can't remember the name of it, but I uh, saw it and I'm actually looking at possibly running it here if I can find something to uh, run on it. So um, I may look at that. I know there's a line I have to I do a eyes on, and I don't know offhand right now what it is. And I may be thinking of that of a line that may not even be in Train Sim Classic at this time. I just know I've seen it on the open railway map. Coming up to 69 miles per hour. And I'll change the view so you can see uh, the hat. Actually, never mind. It is going to be that view. So that is the Hatfield platform. We're at 70, close to 71 miles per hour as we go through Hatfield. I actually might have to cut off my speed. I was not expecting to do that. So after Hatfield, the next station will be Wellwyn Garden City. I suspect we're going to have to slow down a little bit for that. And there will be two more stations between Wellwyn Garden City and Stevenage. So I guess they're about three minutes or so apart now from each other. Two or three minutes. I see a yellow coming up. That might be our yellow, so I am watching. No, never mind. That's a green we have. Yellow, The double yellow is on the other line, so I stand corrected. There is Wellwyn Garden City. So there must be a train at the platform at Wellwyn Garden City on the other line. That's what that suggests to me. We're at 73.3 and we're kind of wavering now on that speed on a 1 in 200 gradient. So I think we're at a point where our speed may have maxed itself out barring a downhill. You can see a single yellow on the other line. So uh, clearly that line does have a stop signal up ahead. 
which tells me there must be a train on the fast line either waiting to leave or I don't know who knows the junction ahead might be set for a line as well which might be the other reason why it's the single yellow signal but because the uh no, you know what? The train is not in the platform, because if it was, then the station, we wouldn't have been able to enter that section on that line. So there you go. The red signal is there at the platform, however. Makes me think if you go too slowly, you're going to see a train come up to that platform and stop. That's my guess. So it might be a service to Alwyn Garden City that leaves after us. That's my guess. So we have a 70 coming up. I'm just lowering my uh, th speed. To accommodate the 70. I think I'm going to get down there on my own without having to coax it down. So that's good for me. I should be able to get that down, right? Just like that. And putting a smaller regulator on to uh, reduce the drop to try to leave ourselves in a spot where we stay around 70. Because we're going to be on a 115 line immediately afterwards as an 801 goes by again. We're going to be on a 115 line because the slow lines merge into the fast lines here for the Wellwood North Tunnel. I believe that's the name of the tunnel. I don't have it on hand right now. So we can now work our way back up to 70 and eventually 73 where we were, maybe 75. We are six miles from our stop at Stevenage and the line is gonna go up to a 125 limit up ahead. That is the maximum speed for the line. We are limited, of course, to 75 miles per hour. This is the Welwyn North Station. A simple two-platform station. This is the tunnel. I see a flashing yellow on one line. I don't know if that's our line or the other line, but I suspect it's the other line. Because I was not alerted. Nope, I just got a notification that it is us. So what that basically means, this double yellow, is telling us that we're going to be moving back to the other line. We need to drop back to 70 miles per hour to move back to the other line. This will happen before Nebworth. And after we pass through Nebworth, we're going to have the approach to Stevenage. We may have slower speed as we enter, approach Stevenage. I'm not sure yet. But I don't recall there being a slower speed. We will see. We have not dropped back below 70 as of yet, so right now we don't have anything to adjust. I almost forgot to respond to the exclamation mark. That would have been awkward. We are going to have the uh, indicator ahead to move over as well, which I'll change over to this lane. We're going to see the... Uh, Yes, the indicator to move to the other line is active. We just got our cue mark. I've been pushing it a few times just in case. So there's an indication that we have a yellow up ahead. Theoretically, the next signal could be red. So I'm zooming in to get a better look. It is a green signal. Or is that a yellow signal? It's now a green signal. So going back to this view. Now we did see the signal had to upgrade, so we know that we are potentially following another train. It may have just taken off from the station. We don't know. I changed the view to see if I can get a look at the signal, but we're going to change back to look at the platform. This is Nebworth. I think we have a green up ahead. Actually, this is the side. Where, yeah, they're both green. Both signals are green. Good. We're less than two and a half miles from Stevenage. I expect because our scenario endpoint is at Stevenage that we're gonna have red up to Stevenage, or at Stevenage rather. 
So we may be getting a double yellow, maybe at this signal, maybe, I, yeah, I think it's going to be a double yellow at this signal, I'm guessing. But the uh, signals could very well continue uh, to be green as well as the other train clears. There's our double yellow. There's our stop. Stevenage is one and a half miles away. Is that a single yellow? That's Oh gosh, that's a single yellow. I don't like that. Let's bring up the F4 head now. I did not want that much break either. We are well on time, so I can bring the speed down anyway. We're a mile away, so if we were going uh, 30, we can go for a couple minutes here. So I don't mind bringing the speed down right now. So zooming in a little more, that is a red signal you can see up ahead, very, very clearly there. I'll change our view over. It just went yellow, so I'm going to take the brakes off. We're going to keep right on chugging along right now. So we're going to get our alert for the yellow. Watch the exclamation mark in the uh, right there. Next to the PSI indicator just below. So we got that indicator. I'm maintaining a low regulator to keep my speed in the 29 to 30 area right now. Because that will get us to the station in about one minute. Of course, we're going to have to hit, hit our brakes, so it'll take a little bit longer than a minute to make the stop. We should stop by just before 736, I believe. That will make us one minute early, which is very acceptable. I'm going to put a little bit of brakes on right now. You can see I kept the F4 HUD up so you can see the brake management. Going to put a little more brake on now. Let's try and fit the whole train in this time. Get some good screenshots for people here. Or photos, I should say, not screenshots. That is about per You know what, that's perfect enough. I think we're good on this one, guys. Arrival at Stevenage Platform 4 as predicted. Let's look at our train as we finish this run. And the Flying Scotsman sits gleaming brightly in the sun. Not even weather. This is just a nice clean livery. I kind of like that for a rail tour loco. So uh, you can see we're going to have some passengers getting on and off here. And we're going to finish this leg here and move into the third leg on Tuesday. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm going to have to give that a play to uh, get that ready. And uh, we're going to... Then figure out what to do after that. I haven't decided yet. But uh, yeah, I want to do... I think I actually know what I want to do next if I can get it working. So I will try and do something else I have in mind here before I announce it. But in the meantime, that is the end of the uh, run. We do have a minute we have to wait because we were early. Um, make sure you do like the video. Make sure you do uh, subscribe to the channel as well so you know when I post this uh, third leg of this run as well as other videos on this channel. Next time we are going to be doing uh, Stevenage all the way to Peterborough on this line. And... Uh, well, that's really all I can say about that. That's next time. So as always, if there's anything you want me to uh, cover on this channel, give me an idea what you want to see. I will be more than happy to play something if I have it. Uh, I do have a lot of DLC, so uh, chances are if you want to see something, I probably have it. Uh, I'm not going to necessarily look to play scenarios that have uh, all sorts of 
reskins and stuff, with the exception of Armstrong Powerhouse, which I do have mostly installed. Um, but with not some of the newest stuff yet, but a lot of the older stuff for sure is installed. So I can play some scenarios dating back to 2022 possibly, uh, but not the newest stuff. I don't necessarily have all of the arms uh, of the ATS reskins or any of the ATS roots or uh, locos as of yet, because I am still um, I still have to work up some uh, more finances before I can get anything like that. Unfortunately, it's just too expensive for my budget right now. But I do know if they ever come up with the um, proposed route to Manchester Airport and there's a merge involving that with the other two uh, Manchester routes, chances are, I, well, I should say three Manchester routes, chances are I'll be on top of that. I'm a little mystified as to what's taking so long here. There it is. That took a while to come up. Uh, excellent work, driver. Well, now be held here, or will now be held here at Stevenage to allow passengers and members of the public to take pictures, which is exactly what I said. Uh, you did well to keep to time, or early. The ECML, East Coast Main Line, is busy, even on a Saturday, and it is important that we stick to our booked times. And, of course, the scenario continues in part two. Well, it says part two, but technically it's part three. Part two of the, uh... Head code that we're doing, but part three of the entire scenario string. We will see that one next time. So let's go to the scoring screen and see how we ended up here. I don't think there's anything else to say. Nope. So we'll see you at the scoring screen. And there it is. Easy enough run to do. So I'll see you next time for part number two. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, it'll be up in a few days if you're seeing this the day it was posted. So come back in a few days. You'll see part number two on Tuesday. In the meantime, have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you, you're part of the world. I'll see you next time for more Let's Play Train Simulator Classic. I'm Cyclone. See you next time. Bye-bye.